what does anybody think or believe anymore? I mean, belief itself is, is treated with disgust. Belief is now regarded as a kind of fat marbling the brain. <laughs> Who here believes in organized religion? Who doesn't? Yeah. You see, people in the West don't believe in anything, and we're proud of it. What do you believe in? Nothing! Nothing! <laughs> what did you have for lunch? I don't fucking believe you. <laughs> we don't believe in anything. We treat religion with contempt, faith, all the rubbish. But you, a child, believing in this, you do good, and then, you know, you die and you get a biscuit? What are you, a fucking idiot? <laughs> What's wrong with you? We don't believe in anything, because we know about science. Believe in science, that's the only thing we know about. The atoms and quarks and things. We don't understand it, <laughs> any of it, but, but, but that's the case. So that's totally different to having a faith, isn't it? You know, they've mapped out 5% of the universe, 5%. I mean, in any other job description, that would be pretty poor, wouldn't it? <laughs> Have you built that wall in my garden? Oh, I've done 5%, you can fuck off. <laughs> the... I, don't, I, call, I don't believe in God, of course I don't, or religion. I go along with science like everybody else, but I don't understand any of it. So I have to rely on television programs to explain it to me. You know, things like Brian Cox, Dr. Goodlooking. A lot of women became very interested in the universe recently, I noticed. <laughs> People would be talking to them, they'd go, shut up, the universe is on, shut the fuck up, it's the universe. Very important, it's, uh, you need to know this stuff. Because <laughs> he would come on and go, hello, um, he's from one of those places. Look, look at the nebula. Look, isn't it beautiful? It's made up of millions and millions of years of things you don't understand. <laughs> The white light comes out of the dark matter and goes into the green lounge area. <laughs> it's beautiful. And all the women are watching this going, it is, yeah, it's lovely. Walk around some more pretty boy, go on. <laughs> go back up the mountain, I like that bit. Why can't you be backless like him? And, <laughs> and he talks in metaphors, which is no use to you if you don't understand the thing in the first place. <laughs> Imagine your head is frozen sodium for bipper base and your feet are planets. When you sit down, you're going to see a lot of moons in your armpits. What the fuck are you talking about now? Anybody who has totally given up on the idea of God and the devil has never been properly kissed or flown on Ryanair with a hangover. You can have God, but you've got to leave the devil to explain a few things. So it's funny to hear people talk about all this stuff again and about they're caring about all that, measuring themselves. And um, here's another thing that comes out of the dark, right? I worked this out. Dinner parties. Dinner parties must have, the first dinner party must have happened in the winter. Because I think what happens is women get tired of looking at the man in their house. <laughs> and they say, Let's get some other bastards around. Not in those words, but that's what they mean. Let's get some other bastards around or go to some other bastard's house and eat with them. Because I don't fucking want to look at you anymore. It's depressing. <laughs> so it's a kind of an adult woman's idea of a good time. And it's not a good time. It's fine if you're 20 or 25, you go out with your friends, you're eating and drinking and having a good time talking. That's the main event. You know, you're talking about love and life and death and work and sex and family and everything and anything that matters. You don't care about the quality of the food. You only know there's food there because one of the drinks is chewy. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you go and you, you have a good time talking and then you arrive back at your house or somebody else's house you think hooray the teleporter worked again and you, you don't think any more about it <laughs> you get you get older and it becomes socially competitive because you get to somebody's house and they start talking bollocks immediately they open the front door to you and they say hi can we give you the tour <laughs> no <laughs> i am only here i only came out in the cold and dark because 
This woman that I love is sick of looking at me, okay? I understood this was a food gig. Where's the food? I have got a house full of shit myself at home. I don't want to see yours. And people sit you down and they talk about house prices and schools. This seems to be the modern British person's dream to get their house into the school so they can watch as their own children get selected for NASA. <laughs> they sit you beside somebody whose laugh sounds like bagpipes mating without the bagpipes. Somebody on the other side who's always more interesting than you. You doesn't matter what you do. You might be the captain of a submarine. They will be a jazz clarinetist, architect, neurosurgeon person. <laughs> And, they, and people, they, I didn't know people did this in their own homes. They, this is how competitive it is. People have watched cookery programs, so they bring out starters. <laughs> the first time that happened to me, I had a panic attack. I went, what the fuck is this? I thought we were gonna eat. This is a prawn pole dancing on a breadstick. Where's the food? <laughs> you cannot expect to be with people and have them relaxed if you're gonna treat them like this. I'm gonna give people decent, simple fare. You know, here is an Irish classic recipe, okay? Uh, it's very simple. You don't freak people out, you feed them and you talk. It's, it, this is from my granny, she was a beautiful, spiritual person. What you do is, you get, she always used to say, it doesn't matter how big the fucker is, they all have a neck. <laughs> and they, you know, Another thing she used to say was, never get involved with more than 11 people sexually at one time. 